Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the next Physics Tap Revise session. And today we're going to be covering energy resources. Um, so I'll just give it another minute or two for people to arrive. Um, welcome back if you've been here for the last couple of weeks. Um, I'll cover everything to do with energy resources today. Uh, last week we covered efficiency and the week before that we covered energy types. So hi there, Alicia. Hi, Evan. Um, please put questions in the chat as we go. Um, any, any questions you've got as we're dealing with the content, I'm more than happy to interrupt what I'm doing to uh, make things clearer if um, you need anything answered. Hi Kai, hi Khadija. So I'll just give it a couple more moments, get a few more people to join. Hello again, hi Ultimate. Um, where there's higher content, Kai, it will be highlighted in the slide. So we cover the higher and the foundation content throughout these sessions. Good, thank you, Alicia. Hope you're all well too. Hi, Ultimate. Hi, Josh. Let's give people another moment. Hi, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that by deed poll. I'm now officially David and not Georgia, Matt, Bob, or anyone else. Right. Okay. I will just introduce myself again as more people are joining. So um, if you, you will know already, if you've joined me before on these sessions, I'm called David. Um, I'm a physics teacher of quite a few years experience and I've been teaching physics and science generally in secondary for all of that time. Um, I also work with exam boards. Oh, hi, Josh. Um, about an hour, maybe just under an hour. Um, I work for exam boards. I, I do, um, I examine, I, I moderate, which a lot of teachers do. And um, at Snap Revise, we offer these sessions to help you with all of the topics throughout the physics, biology, chemistry, and maths, and other subjects as well. Um, so obviously my special in being, specialism being physics, that's what I'm uh, continuing to do today. Um, so we do four plus classes a week with our GCSE tutoring scheme, which is starting soon. Um, I've been telling people about this for the last couple of weeks. Um, in those um, lessons, there will be the whole curriculum covered. Um, you'll get handouts and slides, um, high quality produced uh, questions and, and practice questions and so on. Libraries of all the past recordings that we've done and also one to one drop in sessions. So, um, yeah, I do teach A-level physics. The scope of these sessions, though, um, Jacobs is, is going to be concentrating on the GCSE content. And um, Maya, thank you for the question. It's higher and for foundation. Where we've got higher content that only, it will be highlighted in the, in the slide as I go through it. So um, any questions, I'll just repeat. Please put them in the chat and I'll try and deal with them as I see them. There's sometimes a little bit of delay, so bear with me. The GCSE sessions are starting imminently. <laughs> I'm sorry, I still don't have a definite date, uh, but within the next week or two, I understand. So if you head on over to the website, um, let me move on a slide. If you click on the link here, you can download these slides, so you don't need to click on it just now. Um, but if you <clears throat> click on that link, you can enter your email, and have a chance to win uh, one of 10 accounts to get access to the uh, academic tutoring for the rest of the academic year. Um, so these uh, will be for the current year until the summer, and you'll have access to all the revision materials and the um, class sessions as I've just described. So today we're gonna to be covering energy resources, Yusuf, and I will be underway with that in just a moment. So, um, yeah, today, oh, I'll just answer that question from Yusuf. Head on over to the Snap Revise website, Yusuf, and um, have a look. I don't know the exact cost as yet, but I know that it will be cheaper than the A-level equivalent offering that we currently offer. So if you take that as a guide, I think that's 70 or 80 pounds. This is a year. This is, this is going to be a lot less than that. So, but I can't tell you exactly. Head on over to the Snap Revise website to find out. Right, so today I'm going to be covering different types of resources, energy resources that can be used to generate electricity in a useful form. 
and um, identify renewable and non-renewable energy resources and describe how the use of energy resources is changing. Um, so the lesson we're doing today is GCSE level. Um, so it will help you if you're covering any science physics related topic or exam. Um, essentially, paper one or paper two, that's a good question. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I would need to check on that. Uh, perhaps my colleague could check or else um, I can get back to you on that next time. Okay, so I'm not going to be covering the national grid today. I'm just going to be covering energy resources. So the specification requires that you can describe the environmental impacts of different energy resources, uh, what happens when you use them, what are the pros and cons, um, explain patterns and trends in the use of energy resources, so what's happening over time, and thank you, Ultimate, and also describing how energy resources are used to generate electricity is not required. So you don't have to describe the generation process, you just have to describe what the resources are that are used, and how that's changed over time. Um, the edXL spec, again, same kinds of things, describe the main energy resources available for use on Earth. So fossil fuels, nuclear fuel, biofuels, wind, hydro, tides, solar, and so on, and explain patterns and trends. And for the OCR spec, describing the main energy resources, again, available for use on the Earth, explaining patterns and trends. So as you can see, they are the same wording for each of the exam boards pretty much. So thinking about what we already know and what we did a couple of weeks ago, we talked about energy types. So could I have some um, ideas from the chat, please? What are the different energy types that we know of? There's 10 bullet points there. And just a reminder, we often do describe these as energy stores, although I would argue, as some of you would, that some of them are quite difficult to store. But a lot of these are energy stores, so let's have a look. Brilliant. So good list coming up there. We have kinetic and we've got solar, brilliant. And we've got thermal. OK, types of energy, thermal energy, kinetic energy, solar would be what two types of energy would solar be? There's a whole load coming up here. I can see chemical, magnetic, thermal, elastic, elastic potential, brilliant. So solar would be light and thermal as an energy type. And we've got, what else we got? We've got gravity, gravitational potential energy, GPE. And we've got magnetic. Yep, we can store energy in a magnetic field. Um, yeah, Queen Warrior has said magnetic isn't. Um, many, many, many years ago when I was teaching physics after the first few years, we didn't ever talk about magnetic energy. But now we do, because when you set up a magnetic field, you are storing energy in the field. And so you can, you can access that energy um, by moving a wire through the field, for instance, to generate a current. So magnetic is a form of energy store. Um, we've got elastic. Brilliant. And uh, we've said, yep, yeah, people have said nuclear. Oops. Nuclear energy. We've had electrical energy mentioned. And are there any more coming up here? I think we've covered all of them. Hang on, have we? No, we should have a few more there. Chemical. And sound. Thank you, Evan. Brilliant. So someone says magnetic is AC power. Not, not quite. Um, magnetic fields are generated when a current is moving. Um, so when electrons are moving, they generate an electric field associated with them. Or a magnetic field, a static magnetic field can be generated by a permanent magnet. So there is a difference between energy stored in a magnetic field and AC power. But I think we've got all of the energy types there. Um, Elias said radiant. Um, I think you might mean um, infrared radiation, which is thermal energy. So um, no, you wouldn't use the word radiant, but you'd use the word infrared or thermal. Um, sound energy, yeah, technically not a store. As I said earlier, we tend to refer to many types of energy as stores. We can certainly store elastic. We can certainly store electrical, we can store nuclear, electrical energy stored in something called a capacitor. 
Um, chemical energy is stored in food and in fuels. Kinetic energy can be stored in um, anything that's moving, like a, a flywheel. Elastic potential in a stretched elastic band or a compressed spring or a stretched spring. Thermal energy can be stored in materials. Uh, gravitational potential energy can be stored. So I think probably magnetic and sound are the two slightly different ones. It's difficult to think about how we could store them. But don't worry too much about that. Just know that you can remember the 10 types of energy. And the stored mechanical energy uh, could be something like a wound spring or a standing wave in which energy is stored but not transferred. Uh, radioactivity is nuclear energy, Shadan or Shadan, sorry. Um, so nuclear energy would be what you might refer to as radioactivity. And conduction and convection is in the spec, but they are means of heat transfer. So they're not types of energy. They're just ways that energy can be moved around when particles warm up. So conduction is the movement of particles as they spread out, become less dense and rise up. Uh, sorry, convection is the movement of particles as they spread out, as they become less dense and warm up. Conduction is the vibration of particles in a solid, um, vibrating and knocking against neighbouring particles. Okay, Elia, so motion energy would be kinetic. So we've covered all 10, and I think everyone has mentioned everything. Um, hydro is a form of resource, we'll get onto that. So we're just thinking about what we know already about energy types at the moment. Yep, we've done them all. Thank you, Ultima. Okay, so let's look at energy resources now. Uh, in particular, let's look at fossil fuel resources. So um, a resource is different to an energy type. So a resource is something we can use, we can obtain from the environment, either by um, use of a particular device or by mining or something, and we can then convert that energy resource into useful energy forms. So we need the three types of fossil fuel, first of all. People are getting on board straight away with that. Got your lightning quick today. Right, brilliant. Coal, oil, and natural gas. And Evan has given a really nice a little bit in brackets there saying natural gas is methane. Brilliant. So the three fossil fuels are indeed coal, oil, and natural gas. And brilliant, they can be used by combustion, yeah. So the energy, as Candy said there, these can be used to release energy by combustion, burning them. And more often than not, they, they're used to heat water, to steam. And then to spin a turbine. Normally, that's what most of these fuels are, how most of these fuels are used. But although you can actually with gases and with oils, if you spray them in very fine particles and vaporize them, you can use them to power a turbine directly. And that's how a jet aircraft engine works. So that, that's an example of oil not being used to heat water, but actually being sprayed into a jet turbine. And gas is used that way too. But conventionally in a power station, you burn your fossil fuel and you use it to heat water to make steam. Um, so I've actually listed them in order of cleanliness as well. So coal is one of the dirtiest fuels and natural gas is one of the cleanest, although all of them are problematic and we'll, we'll come on to that. Um, so these fuels are energy stores because of what? What defines an energy store? Where, where's, the, where's the energy come from, should I say? Where's the energy come from in these fuels? So why are they energy stores? What, what's um, natural gas, oil and coal got in common? So ultimate, yeah, the, the original resource for all of these fuels is similar and it is all about chemical energy, yeah. And the chemical energy in the bonds when they're broken through combustion, which is, is used to create the heat. Um, they will run out one day. Where did they come from originally? So where, where does coal, oil and gas come from? What was it that created them in the first place? There's some good ideas coming out here. So um, the sun, energy from the sun made of hydrocarbons. And thank you, Shaden, um, from buried plant and animal material, basically. And yeah, maybe from plankton too, yeah. Um, 
So the sun's energy has um, provided energy to plants and to animals as well, but largely, you know, big forests, loads of vegetation. And when those plants die, they become a store of carbon. And a lot of that carbon has been stored underground and kept under pressure as layers build up on top. They've been compressed, thank you to Boss, and they form hydrocarbons. So they form hydrocarbons, as um, Evan has said, of different lengths. So they're energy stores because they, um, they hold the energy from essentially millions of years ago that's been stored in dead organisms. So you would say that fossil fuels are stores of energy that have formed from dead organisms that have died millions of years ago. OK, and it's not wrong to say that the energy originally came from the sun, but the exam board is not going to expect you to say something like that. Um, so dead animals and plants. Yep, yeah, Khadija. Yep, yeah, dead animals and plants. Any dead, formerly living organism that has been allowed to decompose under layers and layers of sediment and has been uh, kept and trapped there. So where do we find it? Um, where do we find oil, coal and gas, generally speaking? Where, where might we find coal to begin with? Thank you, Queen Warrior. So, yeah, in mines. So we, we might find coal in a mine. Yep, in the ground. Sometimes near the surface, sometimes not. So mining coal um, can be a deep, deep mining process where there's um, not necessarily a, as big a scar left on the landscape after the mine is, 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 is created. But sometimes coal mines are what we call open cast mines. So if you mine on near the surface, you rather than cutting a hole and going down and then tunneling sideways, the mine just digs out the whole surface where the coal is more easily available. And so they're much more environmentally impactful. Um, sedimentary rocks uh, can be, yes, sedimentary rocks are the rocks of a layers of rock which contain oil and so, um, and coal seams in between them. And the oil is usually kept in huge areas with a, a, a non-porous rock above it to keep it trapped. So oil is found underground as well. Often it's under pressure underground. And gas quite often found in similar locations to the oil. So natural gas and oil are sometimes found together um, and sometimes they're not. Um, and the easier, the easier extracted um, oil reserves are those where the oil is available in big cavities, which are becoming uh, harder to find. OK, so oil is found uh, underground in, under pressure, coal mines, coal could be near the surface or underground, and gas is found usually with oil. Um, somebody said the majority of oil is in the Middle East. I think it's quite uniformly distributed, but whether it's available and easy to get at, I think, changes enormously across the world. Okay, so let's look at some other energy resources. We've been thinking about fossil fuels. Um, what is a definition of nuclear power? This is another energy resource that we can use. Um, it's used quite a lot around the world. Um, what do we need to do to use nuclear power as an energy resource? What, what's the, um, thank you, Evan. So nuclear, nuclear fission is, is the first point. That's a good one to make. So it's energy from nuclear fission. And we do actually describe the material that we use for fission as a fuel, although it's a little bit of a misnomer because we're not burning it. And fuel means we're burning something usually. But with nuclear power, we do refer to something as a nuclear fuel. Does anybody know what the two main nuclear fuels are? So what are the two um, main radioactive materials that we use to, um, to, to undergo fission and get energy from?
Thank you, Mark. I'm the boss. And Mark again. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Anasia, uranium-235. Excellent. You're giving me the, uh, the math number there. So the fuels are typically uranium and plutonium. And I can see all sorts of comments in the chat there. Um, isn't it from heat? Isn't it made by heat? Um, is it the use of fusion and fission? Um, you can use fusion reactions to get um, energy from nuclear materials, from radioactive materials, or non, in fact, very safe materials like hydrogen by blasting them together and fusing those um, atoms, those ions together. But that's not a process that is used at the moment because it's not sustainable. The technology isn't there. So nuclear power at the moment is nuclear fission, and it's the um, breaking apart of big unstable molecules into, sorry, unstable uh, nucleides into smaller nucleides. So plutonium and uranium split and they release heat in the process. Okay. Good. Yep. So you just need to know plutonium and uranium are used for nuclear power from fission. And yes, it's used that that process makes heat. And then from then on, it's like a conventional power station. So the heat heats water, water turns to steam, spins a turbine, and that turns a generator in turn. Um, so what is geothermal energy then? This second picture here. Uh, what does that show happening? Another energy resource. So if you think about the word geothermal, brilliant, thank you. So Queen Warrior, Farah, Mark, all good. Underground heat, yeah. So geothermal is heat from underground. <clears throat> yeah, in volcanic areas, yeah, often in areas of high volcanic volcanism, volcanism, that's the word. Um, so places like Iceland. But not just places like Iceland. Geothermal energy can be used, in fact, anywhere in the world. Um, I could heat my house using geothermal energy if I wanted to. I could dig a big hole outside in my garden and I could put pipes down and I could extract the heat energy from the ground. Even though it's not very warm, the ground might only be at seven or eight degrees, it still has energy that it can be extracted and it can be used to heat your house. Um, so geothermal energy is fundamentally heat from the ground. Um, and it's usually from the results of radioactivity. So it's quite usual to comment on geothermal energy being energy from radioactive hot rocks beneath the ground. Um, so I don't think there's anything else to add to that. Sometimes it's closer to the surface of the ground than at other places. So if it's a volcanic area, it's going to be cheaper and easier to harvest. Um, if it's not, if you live in a non-volcanic area like me, you have to pay a bit more money to dig the holes to get to it. Right, um, Ali has asked, is it renewable? Um, is geothermal energy renewable? Gershan is saying yes. Do we agree with Gershan? Yep, Mark, the boss, yep. So we've got three yeses there. Um, I'm gonna put a, a big R there for renewable, yeah. Okay, so geothermal energy is renewable. Yeah, it, it's fundamentally the earth isn't going to cool down enough for that energy to go away. Um, you just have to take the energy out at a rate at which the earth can replenish it. Yeah. What about nuclear power? If we're going to go down this, um, this route, is nuclear power renewable? So we're using uranium and plutonium and we are getting those unstable nuclei to split into fission products. Is that renewable? Right, so there's lots of people saying no now. And also the very, very good question from Harris, what is renewable energy? Yeah, nuclear power is non-renewable. And I'll explain why, so I'll just put an NR here. So renewable energy is energy which can be uh, replenished. It can be um, re replenished naturally by the Earth's own resources. Um, with nuclear power, you have to mine uranium and plutonium. And there's a limited amount 
of, of plutonium and uranium on the planet. So it's going to, as the boss has said, it's going to eventually run out. So that's why nuclear power is non-renewable. Um, Radioactivity for geothermal, there's natural radioactivity in the rocks of the planet. And that is what has originally generated the heat in the core. Yeah. So we talk about geothermal as being renewable because there's effectively, um, as far as humans are concerned, there's, a, there's an unlimited resource of it. And that heat's going to continue coming up from the core of the planet and from those rocks, whereas we will run out of uranium and plutonium. So let's move on to wind. Um, is wind renewable or non-renewable? So I've got an immediate renewable there from Yusuf. Thank you. So yeah, the wind won't run out. Um, and you can see a picture of here, there's a, a turbine. Definitely renewable, yeah. Um, uses the natural winds on the planet's surface. Oh, this is not always windy, but it's going to be windy again pretty soon if it isn't one day. So that energy is going to come back. It makes sense. It's renewable. It's going to be windy again. You're not going to use the wind up. So that's why it's renewable. Again, uh, let's have a look at solar. So um, what is solar energy? How can we harvest solar energy? Okay, so solar is also renewable. Brilliant. It's energy from the sun. It, we're, it's renewable, but will work until the sun burns out, Marcus said. Um, we've luckily got about four and a half billion years for that. So um, energy from the sun, solar cells. Um, it's not available at night, Candy, but you would still call it renewable. So you wouldn't say solar isn't renewable when it's dark. You would always say solar was renewable because it's going to come back. I'll come to you ultimately in a minute. But you wouldn't say it's not renewable at night. It's just that it's not always available, like the wind isn't always available. So um, ultimately saying, what is wind energy? It's any form of energy resource that is derived from the natural movement of wind around the planet. So it's harvesting the kinetic energy of the wind molecules, the molecules of air passing through a turbine, making it spin, and that powers a, or spins a, a generator and makes electricity. So that's what wind energy is. Um, and we've sent there's various designs for wind turbine. They usually look quite a lot like the, the picture on screen in front of you. Um, so it's always going to be windy. The wind is obviously powered by the sun. So it's all to do with movement of the atmosphere. And um, at some point, there's, there's always going to be sunlight of different, different intensities around the planet. Um, let's have a look. How do you know if it's renewable or non-renewable, Khadija? The thing to think about is, is it something that you have to dig up in order to make available to use, to either to burn it or to use it in a nuclear reactor? If it's something that you can just put some machine in the way of and get the energy out of it, then generally it's renewable. So wind power, tidal power, wave power, and solar power, which we're talking about now, they're all things which are, they're always gonna be around. They're replenished all the time. Okay, so the sun, yeah, we can use panels, like we've got pictures of here. And some of them convert light, visible light into uh, a current, an electrical current. And some solar panels um, harvest infrared. So they harvest the infrared, which I'm going to call IR for here, just to fit it in. So some solar panels heat water, and some solar panels generate electricity. And you can even get solar panels that do both, although they're quite expensive and complicated. OK, um, Evan is saying it, it's called a solar cell, not a panel. OK, the, the difference between the two is a solar cell would refer to what's called um, photovoltaic. Uh, I'm not going to write that down because you won't need to know that. But a solar cell produces the electricity. Um, a solar panel could refer to either type that I've talked about here. So it could be a solar cell making electricity. It could be a solar uh, panel making or transferring heat from the infrared in the sun's light. 
Um, so it's not necessarily correct to always call them a solar cell, but if it's making electricity, it is. Okay, even in this country, we can make good use of solar energy, but the equator is the best place because the sun is more directly overhead. Right, let's move on from there. So other energy resources, we've touched on some of these already. Um, so if we look at the first one, can anyone give an example of a biofuel? Is biomass renewable? Trees, biodiesel, excellent, right, okay. So we've got trees, we've got biodiesel, Basically, wood, yeah, any, any plant material really, um, any plant material or any biological material, animal waste even, which can be burnt. Um, and someone asked a moment ago, it was Yusuf, is biomass renewable? Yes, it is. So it's a renewable energy resource. And you can make uh, biogases by letting waste degrade and decompose. You can make bioethanol by, um, you can um, ferment the uh, products of uh, potatoes or corn and make ethanol. You make biodiesel by using vegetable oils. And so, so biofuel is any biologically derived fuel. Anything that's come from organic matter, thank you the boss, anything coming from organic matter being burned. That's what biofuel is. Something that is organic material that you can burn. You normally don't have to dig it out. Um, you can grow it, you can sustainably manage a, a woodland and you can grow your wood and cut it down and burn it. Um, you can collect dead plant material from farming waste. And even in, in the food industry, for instance, where chickens and, and, and wildfowl, oh, sorry, and, and fowl are being produced, um, you can use the waste sawdust and the, the waste, the organic waste and the birds to burn and to make energy. So uh, to create, sorry, electrical energy. So you can use them as a biofuel. So moving on to hydroelectrical energy. What is hydroelectric energy harvesting? What, what's the basic type of energy that hydro uses? Thank you, Ultima and Asia. You got the gist of it between you there. So we've got um, water being held up in a high place in a reservoir, either behind a dam or up in a mountain. And it's water falling through a height. So the water falls through a turbine to spin a generator. Again, it's not a wind turbine, but it's something that looks very similar. So the water from a, behind a dam would be allowed to drop through a very wide pipe. And as it falls through that very, very wide pipe, there'll be a turbine within the pipe, which it causes to spin around. And that can be converted into electrical energy in a generator. Uh, moving on to tidal. Now, someone talked about turbines in water. You weren't far off here. So you can have tidal turbines. which this picture is an example of. So where you've got a narrow channel in, a, in a, a waterway, usually where there's a river estuary and you've got water flowing in and out uh, with the tides, you, you, you can trap that water behind a barrier temporarily and move it through the turbines either way, or you can capture the energy directly using turbines in the flow. So Ultimate is asking, is hydroelectric renewable and um, because of the action of the atmosphere and rain then yes it is so dams refill because the atmosphere the heating of the atmosphere raises water it falls again as rain and refills the reservoirs so hydroelectric is renewable tidal is renewable it's dependent on the the movement of the moon orbiting the earth uh, it's the it's the lunar tides that cause the bigger tides and that's what we can harvest there. Um, and the difference between tidal and wave, well, this is something called an oscillating sort of snake listing here. So these are tubes which are fixed with, um, with, with mechanisms which allow fluid, hydraulic fluid to move up and down them. And when that does, it spins turbines again within those tubes. So as the water goes up and down, the oscillation of the waves is making electricity. So, um, 
movement up and down of the waves, makes turbines spin inside these wave generators. And tidal turbines can also be like a, a barrage, so we can trap, we can trap the water at high and low tide behind either side of a barrier and then let that water flow through a turbine again. You are, you do need to know, yes, that you need to know about tidal energy, Gershan, you need to know about wave energy, hydroelectric biofuel, everything I've covered, yeah. So tidal energy is when you trap um, the tidal high difference of water behind a barrier and then you let, when the height difference is biggest, you let that water level equal out and you extract the energy as it flows through a turbine. Or it can be where you put turbines directly in a very strong tidal current and then you generate, without trapping the water, you generate the electricity as the, as the water moves forwards and backwards. Okay, so there's actually quite a lot there to take in, isn't there? As Gershon's pointed out, because you do need to remember all these things. Um, hopefully a lot of them are straightforward because you would have covered a lot of these bases in Key Stage 3. But can I have some ones, twos and threes just to get a feeling for how you feel about it so far, please? So if you're quite happy and you think everything we've covered is quite straightforward, a one. If you're okay with it, a two. If you're really confused, give us a three. We'll seem quite happy with that so far. If you're not, please do let me know. Just ask a question. Um, brilliant. Thanks, Farah, Mark, Wendy. Brilliant. I'll do my best, ultimate. <laughs> I sometimes go around in circles because I, I, I want to answer a question. It's disappeared off the screen and I start answering another one and I hope I'm clear. Uh, if I'm not clear at any point, then please just tell me to say something again. Um, great. Thank you very much. Fantastic. That's good. So let's move on then to an exam question example. Um, so different energy sources are used to generate electricity and use words from the box to match the correct energy source to each of the descriptions given in the table. So have a look at that. Um, Sienna, yeah, currently we're doing these every week and next week there are going to be three um, if you look on the Snap Revise um, YouTube site, you'll see them scheduled there so you can add them. Um, so I'll be doing three sessions and moving on through the physics next week. And then I believe that the GCSE tutoring course will take over. Um, so next week there will be further free sessions, yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. So energy from the Earth's core is used to heat water. What kind of energy is that an example of? So I've got people answering all three here. So one geothermal, two nuclear, three biofuel. One geothermal, two nuclear, three biofuel. Ultimate, yeah, next week I'm doing three GCSE sessions. Yep. Um, so number one, most people are saying geothermal. I've got coal. I can understand why you might say coal, Rama, because you're taking the coal from the earth. But the clue in the question is it says from the earth's core. So they're getting you to think about, well, where could that possibly come from? Um, so we take coal from much nearer the surface and it's not hot, whereas the geothermal energy is just naturally hot rocks. So I think most people have got the answers um, there. So geothermal is energy from the Earth's core, heating water. And I believe I'm right in saying in Iceland, they actually used water heated by geothermal energy to, to warm their roads up, to stop them freezing over, because the energy is so cheap, it's better than salting the road or anything else. Um, they're still free next week, Ultima. And I think beyond that, you'll need to subscribe to the uh, tuition service, but please look at Snap Revised website to, to double check. Um, fission of uranium to heat water. Most people have said number two is nuclear, and you'd be absolutely right. Uh, so nuclear fission is used to heat water, not fusion yet, because we're not quite there yet with the technology. And gases from rotting plant material, well, it's something that was once living. It's an organic material, so that's going to be a biofuel. Are we all okay with that? I think everyone who wanted to answer there has, has done so. Thank you, Aaliyah. Okay, so let me move on. So 
There's a question here, including Iceland. So Iceland is a country that generates most of its electricity using geothermal power and hydroelectric power stations. Um, so complete the following sentences to describe how some geothermal power stations work. So in regions where volcanoes are active, the ground is hot. So somewhere like Iceland. Um, what do we pump down into the ground that's cold in order to extract geothermal energy? What are we pumping down there? Cool. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Candy. So we're pumping cold water down into the ground. So we make some holes, we put some pipes underground. And then thank you, Evan, and thank you, the boss. It gets heated by the hot rocks. It returns to the surface as steam. It's kind of like an artificial geyser, really, or geyser, how do you want to call it, uh, which is a natural form of the same thing. And then the turbine drives what? Ultimate has said it there, generator. So we've got the steam spinning a turbine, which is spinning a generator to produce electricity. Brilliant. So this question now, 4A, which one of the following statements about geothermal power stations is true? Are they fossil fuels? Are they producing carbon dioxide? Are they a reliable source of electricity? And we've got three and C, which means which means three as well, I'm guessing. Um, but they don't use fossil fuels. No. OK, they don't produce carbon dioxide. They are reliable because the ground's going to be hot. Um, they don't produce carbon dioxide, actually. Um, ultimate, they, there is some carbon dioxide produced when you make the power station, of course, if you use concrete. But when you're operating them, um, the heat from the earth is, is, is completely carbon free. So it's a very green, renewable uh, means of producing uh, electricity. Um, what's needed for a hydroelectric power station to be able to generate electricity? Do you need a long coastline? Do you need sunny days or do you need falling water? for hydroelectricity. Falling water, big coastline, or lots of sunny days. And a lot of you there are going for the correct answer, which is brilliant, number one, yeah. Just don't confuse hydro with tidal. Um, tidal energy can take advantage of a small fall of water, but it's the location of tidal that's important. It's normally on a river estuary where you can trap the tidal levels. So brilliant, you've got those right. Um, let's have a look on now at choosing energy resources and why you might choose one over another. So energy resources are renewable or non-renewable. Um, so can we, having talked about it quite a lot now, can we define what a renewable energy resource is in a sentence? So you've got the question in front of you, what is a renewable energy resource? How would you describe it? Brilliant. So, Asma, you've given an example of one. Be wary of that. Um, you know, it is a good example of one, but it doesn't quite answer the question. And then I've got Ultima. Yeah, one that can be created again, one that can be replenished and therefore will not run out. That's probably the best answer there. And other people have said the same thing or similar as well. Evan, renewable can be replenished. Brilliant. OK, um, one that can be replenished. Is a great answer. And then adding to that, never runs out. So I think, um, brilliant. Non-renewable there, we're moving on to. I'm pleased that you are. Thank you, the boss. Um, all the answers I can see there, Sia, Mark, Khadija, you're all quite correct. Candy too, yeah. Um, Candy, slightly different answer there. Doesn't produce greenhouse gases. Some kind of renewable energy does. Um, if you burn biofuels, you do make CO2, but you're not adding to the carbon that was already there uh, because you're burning stuff that was originally uh, just, just grown. Okay, so a non-renewable energy resource is one that will eventually run out. So it will run out. Um, has, it's limited, yeah, it's exhaustible. Doesn't necessarily always produce carbon dioxide because an example of a non renewable fuel that doesn't is nuclear energy. Um, it, and thank you, Hannah, you've just made that point. Um, so, nuclear energy is actually quite clean, but the problem with nuclear energy is the cost 
in terms of carbon emission when you build the power station because there's a lot of concrete involved. So let's do some examples now. Um, we have the example of solar for renewable to begin with. Let's quickly whiz through these examples. Uh, nuclear is non-renewable. Um, if you want to give me some examples of renewable and non-renewable energy resources, let's fill in this table. Wind is renewable, yep, yeah, brilliant. Uh, wave power, fantastic, thank you. Um, hydro, biofuels, geothermal, what are we missing there? Just missing one there, I think, which is the one I said, don't get confused with hydro. Someone has mentioned it, the boss has mentioned it. Tidal, thanks, Anna. Yeah, Tidal, they're all the renewable energies we've talked about and that you need to know about. So renewable, uh, now we're on to non-renewable. There won't be as many here, we probably won't fill this column up. So yeah, we've got uh, gas, natural gas, uh, we've got coal and we've got oil and we've got nuclear, essentially all, yeah, I'll put in brackets because they are, their fossil fuels, um, these are anyway, not nuclear, of course, although we do refer to nuclear fuel as nuclear fuel, it's not being burned, but we do call it fuel. That's it, brilliant, you're all coming up with the right answers. Yeah, oil, uh, crude oil, um, we use the word um, oil to cover all forms of oil. Essentially crude oil is what you get out of the ground and then that is separated by heating, that's that's chemistry. Um, and you'll know about that from looking at fractionating columns and things like that. But yeah, petroleum comes from crude oil. Okay, let's press on. Um, so changes of uses, um, if we look at what's been going on in the way that we make energy, electricity that is, the way that we convert energy, um, look at what's happened to fossil fuels in the last sort of 20 or so years. Um, why are we reducing use of fossil fuels? What is it do you think that's driving that reduction in use of fossil fuels? A couple of things really. And nuclear power is actually reduced as well, but renewable resources have increased. So yeah, the, the key thing is we've realized they're running out. And I say we've realized because people haven't always been aware. Um, so we've realized that new, uh, sorry, fossil fuels are running out. Yeah, we've realized we've become very acutely aware of the greenhouse effect and the, the effect on the climate. Um, so environmental effects are more understood. Yeah, I could write an essay here. So, uh, sorry, I should say understood, not understand. My apologies. Um, I'm going to keep it brief because I know you'll have loads of really valid ideas about um, the environment and climate change, global warming, all of those things, um, which I can see coming up in the chat now, producing greenhouse gases, producing acid rain, if they contain sulfur, which coal and oil do a lot, and gas to a lesser extent. So, yeah, environmental factors, that means the reduction in fossil fuel use. Um, nuclear power, um, again, it's gone down because of the, the problems of storing uh, nuclear waste. So waste storage in terms of nuclear power, although I would argue it's probably on the um, increase again in some places in the world now. And why have renewable resources increased? So what's happened um, to make renewable energy and renewable resources a better bet? They're certainly more environmentally friendly. There's certainly, thank you Gershan, ethical factors to take into account. Um, around the world, all you young people going off to university and studying and, and developing idea. What, what's, what's happened to make renewable energy better? They have become cheaper. There, there, there's been pressure from governments and certainly from the public and campaigns. And ultimately, young, young new engineers and uh, scientists have developed better technology. Thank you, Hannah. It's, a, it's really fundamentally um, better technology that has allowed the use of more renewable resources. 
difficult to spell and speak at the same time. There we go. So yeah, better technology, new technologies, wind has come down in cost. It's now cheaper than arguably nearly every other form of electricity generation. Um, there are still environmental factors involved in wind, but it's a very, very green form of making electricity. Good. Discovery of new renewable resources. I don't know about that one, Donna. Just thinking about that. I mean, it's the big coastlines of the world that we, we need to put wind turbines around to gather that energy from the wind. Um, I think we, we know what the renewable resources are available to us, and probably the best one is the sun. Um, and that's probably one which has a lot going through in the future with new technologies for solar panels. Right, let's move on. Um, so how, how are we feeling now about the, the ethics, if you like, and the reasons for the change in the way we use energy resources? Could you describe, if asked in an exam, why we use less fossil fuel now? What are the reasons? Why do we use more renewable uh, resources now? And, and why do we use a bit less nuclear now at the moment? So lots of ones. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, OK, um, are there any particular questions, Harris, that you want me to go back over? Is there anything there that um, wasn't clear um, or that I could make clearer for you? And Khadija as well. I quickly was back to the last slide. So this type of question that's on the slide in front of you will be one where it's the key ideas that you need to get across. Um, you've got some data, so look at, the, look at the table of data carefully, see what the trend is, and then thinking about what you know about the different types of fossil fuel. Um, just very briefly in this case, what, why are they being used less? You might be asked um, a more detailed question with more marks about why might it be bad for a coal mine to be built near to a town? And you might be asked to give good and bad things. And you might then to maybe need to make five or six points to get all of the marks. But they're usually quite, um, quite obvious in some of the way that you need to answer them. Um, I would say, if you're not quite sure, err on the side of the blooming obvious, to be polite. So if you're given a long answer question about why is this coal mine good and why is it bad, think about the obvious things you would feel about it if it was next to your town. Um, but those are the kind of questions that could come up that would just require a more longer written answer. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the next bit then. Let's have a look at another question. Um, so many power stations burn fuels to generate electricity. Fuels can be renewable or non-renewable. Wood is used. Why do we call wood renewable? So why is wood a renewable fuel? Uh, thank you. Um, I like Evan's answer best so far and Claudia's as well. Um, first, boss and ultimate, you're fine. It's about being able to grow it again. OK, it can be replenished is your answer. You can use it can be grown again. You don't have to use these exact words. Of course not. Um, but it can be replenished. Yeah, it can grow back. It doesn't always grow back. It depends how you manage it. I mean, you can cut down forests and, and turn them into monocultures to grow palm oil if you want to. Um, but that's um, not best for the environment, not sustainable. Um, so a student has completed her homework, look at her table, she's made two mistakes, and what are they? So is wood renewable? Um, wood renewable, yes or no? Plant and vegetable oils, renewable, yes or no? Peat, renewable, yes or no? So peat, if you didn't know, peat is the um, decomposing layer underneath the grass and heathland of highland, um, highland areas with uh, low quality soils. Is coal renewable? North Sea gas? Okay, I think coal and uranium. Okay, let's have a look. So what two mistakes? Coal, coal renewable. Coal's not renewable, is it? Okay, brilliant. You've got the gist. Coal is non-renewable. Uranium, is that renewable? No, Hannah's right, it's not. There's a limited amount of uranium. Um, let's have a look at the others. North Sea gas, fossil fuel. So that's not gonna come back, that's correct. Peat, yeah, when you've dug all the peat up, it's gone. Uh, plant and vegetable oils and wood, yeah, we can renew those. So they are the two answers. Um, anyone not happy with that? Seem okay with that? Okay. Let's move on from there then. Uh, almost at the end now, probably not have a run a minute or two today. Um, so scientists are researching the world's energy use for the future. And there's a graph there showing some research 
Um, and this is billions of tons, and this is the use in a certain year. Okay, so then there's got a key down here at the bottom showing how coal, oil, gas, nuclear, and renewables are changing. And then two questions. So um, this would be very much a high level question, Gershan. Um, this question here, where you're interpreting quite complex data on a graph, um, this would be a high level, this would be a high demand. If, if you think of the demand as being one, two, and three, this would be a level three demand question in an exam. So the future demand for fossil fuels is expected to increase. Give two reasons why they're worried about the increase in demand. So why do you think they're worried about the increase in demand for fossil fuels? What would be the problem there, according to the data you've got in front of you? It would increase the rate of climate change due to increased emission. Yeah. Global warming, then non-renewable. Yeah. So I think for two marks, we've got certainly a good answer there. Um, global warming would increase. And also, as Josh has said there, thank you, Josh, they're running out. And Yusuf too. So um, fossil fuels are running out. And because they're running out, that increased demand for them is not going to be able to be met. Or if it is, it's going to be at a much higher cost. So um, they're the two, they are two good answers for the two marks there. And for part two, uh, in the UK, the government's closing coal-fired power station stations and planning new nuclear power stations. Why does the government want more nuclear power stations? So why would we want more nuclear? And we have closed at the moment, I think all but one of our, of our coal fired power stations. Right, so um, thank you, Hannah. There are fewer greenhouse gas emissions. So they're better for the environment. They have a high energy to put, um, output. That's true. Um, what's going to happen to demand for electricity, do you think, over time as people move from fossil fuels to alternative sources? What are we going to need more of? So at the moment, if you think about the increase in the use of electric cars, uh, the increase in the use of heat pumps to, for houses. Yeah, so the actual use of electricity as, a, as, a, as an energy uh, type is going to increase. So there's going to be much more demand for electricity and we need to meet that. So to meet the higher demand. And we can't do that using coal because we would pump an, a lot more CO2 and other greenhouse gases out into the atmosphere. So nuclear power stations can be part of the solution. So sorry to be rushing slightly at the end here. I specifically wanted more exam questions for you in this one. And I think because we had more questions earlier on than I was thinking and we might get, I've had to, to push through it a bit. So sorry if I've gone a bit quick towards the end. Um, you should be able to describe different types of energy resource and how they can be used to generate energy or generate electricity. Um, identify renewable and non-renewable resources and describe how over time, given some information, the use of energy resources is changing. So I hope you are able to do that. Have you got any questions you'd like me to um, talk to you about now? Thank you, Gershan. Um, and the boss is saying nuclear power stations have a higher energy output than coal. Um, yeah, I mean, you can keep a coal powered power station fed um, if you have a big enough supply of coal. Um, but in terms of the size and the impact on the environment, I think you're probably right there. Um, thanks, Ultima. Thank you, Farah. And Kaji, Khadija and Evan. Um, so um, if you've got any questions, do just pop them in the chat. I'm just going to quickly finish off by um, saying a little bit more about what SNAP Revise are offering again, and then I'll come back to Hannah. Um, so there are continuing lessons on next week. And I'm not sure this uh, timetable in front of you is quite correct. So have a look at the YouTube site of SNAP Revise. 
And don't forget to enter the competition to win one of 10 free accounts. Hannah, what was your question on radiation? Next week, there'll be three physics sessions. You're very welcome, Rama. I'm just scanning for Hannah's question on radiation. If Hannah hasn't left us. Oh, there we go. One sievert, one joule per kilo as a measure of damage to the body by ionizing radiation. Okay. Um, you caught me out there, Hannah, because I, I think you're right, but having not taught that recently, <laughs> I'm not 100% certain, but one sievert being equal to one joule per kilogram of energy absorbed by body tissue doesn't sound unreasonable, to be honest. I would have to look it up. Um, so I'm sorry, I can't answer that question off the top of my head. We do sometimes get caught out. I'd rather say I don't know than I do. Um, I think it's right. But I'd have to look at other units equitable. I'd have to check. Sorry. <laughs> um, and Josh, those sessions next week from me, yeah, they'll all be physics, physics GCSE sessions. Yeah. There will be biochemistry and maths as well, biology, chemistry and maths as well. Yeah, thanks, Asiya. No, there will be biochemistry and maths ultimate, definitely. <laughs> and um, the competition, yeah, if you click on the link that's um, in the chat, you can download the slides for today. And the competition is there. And so you should also see the link there. Um, Hannah, there are sessions continuing, but I believe after next week, they won't be publicly available on YouTube. So have a look on the SNAP Revised website and see what's on offer then, what you think. OK, so I wish you all the very best and I'll, I'll end the stream now. Good luck with your revision. Just once, Claudia. <laughs> Take care and bye, everyone. <laughs>